If you are an empath, self-care is critical to you being able to conserve your energy and show up for yourself and others in your lives. I know because I'm one of them. If you're an empath and you're looking for self-care tips, stay tuned because that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. For the best advice on self-care and personal empowerment, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos every Monday and Thursday. Empaths are individuals who are highly sensitive. They can absorb other people's energy. They can sense other people's energy, feelings, thoughts, and emotions. These are individuals who can sometimes become overwhelmed by the energy that's around them or be impacted by what's going on with other people. Now, if you're not sure if you're an empath or not, I highly encourage you to take a short quiz. You can find it at Empath Test. I'm going to link to that below. And by answering the questions, you can find out for yourself if you are an empath. Now, when I was younger, I was able to pick up on people's emotions really easily. And a lot of times I felt like I was overreacting to situations or people. I would be really affected by things that I would see on television and I would often find myself being unsure if what I was feeling was actually true for me. And because of that, I suffered from a lot of anxiety and overwhelm. And I didn't have tools in my toolkit to be able to manage the emotions. I would take on other people's emotions, take on other people's feelings without understanding that that's what was happening. And for any empath out there, you might recognize this as being familiar. You may also experience things like when you go into a crowded space, it becomes overwhelming really quickly. Certain lights or sounds or places might be a bit too much for you. And I know that that's true for me. And what I've had to do over the years is develop strategies to help me take care of myself so that I can function in the world and show up not only for others, but also for myself. That's what I want to share with you today. I work with a lot of empaths and being one myself, one of the first tips I recommend to people and one that I use in my own life is to get enough rest. We wanna make sure that the rest that we're getting is quality and is allowing us to replenish ourselves. Empaths tend to lose a lot of energy quickly over the course of their day and getting that rest is a critical piece to this self-care puzzle. Now. When I say rest, I mean real rest. We want our parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest part of our nervous system, to have time to come online. This enables the body to replenish and restore itself. If we don't give adequate time for the parasympathetic nervous system to come online, our sympathetic nervous system goes into overdrive, and that's the fight or flight part of our nervous system. When that's online, all the time and doesn't have opportunities to shut off, that's when we get into states of chronic stress, chronic anxiety, chronic overwhelm. So getting adequate rest, getting the best rest possible is one of the most important things for empaths to remember as part of their self-care strategy. The second thing I recommend for empaths is to tune into what the body needs in terms of food and nourishment. A lot of empaths I know will skip breakfast, eat foods that keep them a bit more ungrounded. And those types of foods, and I'll incorporate a little bit from the Ayurvedic perspective, those types of foods might be things like uh, raw salads, smoothies, colder things, lighter things, things that don't necessarily ground the system. So for empaths, for myself, what I noticed is that when I eat more nourishing foods, foods that are easier to digest, like kitchery, stews, um, things like roasted vegetables or stewed apples, even porridges, oatmeal, things like that, I tend to feel a bit more grounded, more nourished. 
also incorporating good sources of protein. Now, as a vegetarian, I skip things like meat, but you might choose to get your protein from nuts, seeds, legumes, from tofus, from green leafy vegetables that have higher protein content. So tuning into what the system needs and honoring that as an empath and being clear that what you are craving or needing nourishment wise is truly aligned with what you need and not aligned with someone else. The next tip is around avoiding stimulants. So this has to do with things like coffee or highly caffeinated teas. Empath systems are already operating at a high level and when we ingest a lot of caffeine, our system can tend to get a little keyed up. It tends to escalate feelings of anxiety and overwhelm because our systems are so sensitive to things. So what I recommend is you don't have to cut out coffee completely. I certainly haven't and I've I've learned how to manage my coffee consumption over the years, but maybe limiting to yourself to one cup of coffee or one cup of highly caffeinated tea in the morning. And then shifting to things like herbal teas or lower caffeinated teas in the afternoon and evening. There are also lots of great coffee alternatives out there. There are chicory root coffees, there are mushroom blends. There are things like dandelion root that I know have worked really well for some of the empaths that I've worked with. So choosing how and when you utilize stimulants and beginning to notice what happens in your system when you take these things in. My next tip for empaths is around creating healthy boundaries around the things in your life. Being really aware of where your energy gets depleted and where your energy fills up. Empaths by nature tend to be givers. We tend to want to show up and be there for everyone and everything, but that's just not possible. As an empath, as somebody who's highly sensitive, I know that if I'm not being really clear on what my yeses and nos are in relation to people, events, projects, are, if that's not clear, I end up feeling overwhelmed, stressed, and exhausted much more easily. And so I've had to learn over the years where my boundaries are. And if you want to know more about healthy boundaries, I encourage you to check out my recent video. I'm going to link to that in the corner above and in the description below. Last but not least, I want you to honor your empathic superpower. Being an empath is a gift and it allows us to be there for both ourselves and others in really unique ways. Find ways for you to utilize this gift that you have, whether it's through volunteering or in the work that you're already doing. We need to honor the fact that we have this high sensitivity and that we can use it for some really good work in this world. I know that a lot of the empaths that I've worked with have become counselors or coaches. They have become nurses or teachers. Most empaths I know have found a lot of joy in doing work that enables them to be in service to others. So tune into how to best enhance your empathic superpower and then go out and make that happen. Being an empath can sometimes feel overwhelming. It can sometimes feel like a lot to be this sensitive to people and the world around us, but with the right tools in place, you can put your empathic superpower to good use. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos every Monday and Thursday. For more tips on how to take care of yourself every single day, make sure you download my 50 self-care tips for everyday living. You can find the link for that in the description below. Stay ignited out there. I will see you soon.